like to share with you our scripture lesson. Our scripture lesson comes to us from the book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, from a contemporary uh, translation of this scripture. And I invite you now to join in this, uh, these words that are shared and let them speak to you in a powerful way. As we hear the ancient instruction of truth, let it become today's instruction for successful living. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, enlarge my boundaries, and that thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldst keep me. Let's apply this a lesson to our lives together as we firm this statement. Let this be an affirmation within our hearts. Today, I'm expanding my soul. I am growing in consciousness. I am growing in the goodness of God. Say that with me. Today, I'm expanding my soul. I am growing in the goodness of God. Amen. In this time, uh, we may ask this question, how do you define this moment, this moment that we're in? What would you call this? We've come to a really unique time in our lives. We're in the midst of a pandemic. We wonder, how do we contain ourselves? go through this how do we we've got so many questions and we're wondering most of all what's going on and how do we deal with this what do we call this moment well let me suggest something to you i suggest we call this moment palm sunday for our own individual lives i suggest that we call this moment a triumphal entrance i suggest that we call this moment a moment of expansion let me explain why Today is Palm Sunday. A good friend of mine posted, it's Wash Your Palm Sunday. Uh, whatever it may be, we want to celebrate this wonderful tradition within the church. Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entrance into Jerusalem. It's a moment when we find that he began to expand his ministry. Having had a ministry for quite some time throughout Galilee, traveling around the Sea of Galilee, many different cities from Capernaum to Cana, ongoing his ministry, sharing the good news, teaching, training, feeding the multitudes and doing the miracles. And then there came a moment within his ministry where he felt it's time to expand. It's time to move into Jerusalem, to take this ministry into this place of great peace and solitude but filled yet with all kinds of challenge and turmoil for him. For his disciples warned him that the people there are not ready to receive you. The religious leaders of the day, they are in opposition to all that you're teaching. Your message will not be received. Jesus, maybe it's best that you don't go into Jerusalem. But he felt this was his moment. This was his time for expansion. This was his moment to fulfill his purpose. Do you know your soul has a purpose? It has a desire to expand. It wants to fulfill its purpose to be the light of the world, to be the light of love, truth, and understanding It's making a difference. We say that every Sunday in our defining statement. This is who we are. This is what the soul desires to do, to expand, to be this light of love, to be this light of truth, to be this light of understanding in a greater way than ever before and to make a difference in the world. From the beginning of time, the desire to expand has been there and the divine presence of God is ever expanding and desiring to expand within us. Genesis chapter nine, verse seven shares this. And as for you, be fruitful and multiply. God's command to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Go and expand, move beyond the territories as we read in the passage of scripture from Jabez's desire to say, I want more, and God's desire to say, I offer you more, has been this wonderful message through time of expanding all that is within us to embrace an innate desire within us to want something greater and more. Can I suggest that this is our time to expand, to go beyond our current perimeters, for the Spirit is speaking and guiding us and opening doors. And as this is seen as Palm Sunday, what a great metaphor for us, because we too are feeling this call to expand and to go into new territory and go out in new ways and to live our life changed, transformed from this pandemic. Jesus, seeing this opportunity to expand and move into Jerusalem, 
he experienced a triumphal entrance. Of, though he was facing challenge, people around him offering praise and calling out, Hosanna, Hosanna, welcoming the message, welcoming someone who was willing to take the risk and expand, welcoming someone who is to see that through the midst of challenge, there is an opportunity to express the highest and best. This was truly Jesus's moment of stepping off the curb, of moving to a new level, where there were challenges that seemed to arise, he began to feel greater things were unfolding for him. And as he moved into Jerusalem, as his ministry moved in that direction, became the unfolding of the greatest moments of his entire life and ministry. The opportunities to demonstrate eternal life, to demonstrate a resurrection power. I find that this could be a moment for us the very same. Could this moment of challenge be calling us to our own triumphant entrance? An entrance into a new way of living, a new way of looking at the world, a new way of our lifestyle, of making changes within our life. For in the midst of this pandemic, we're called to do church in a whole new way. Who would have thought two months ago that every minister would suddenly need to be uh, come into a social media expert and become a, a film expert, a, a multimedia expert, a video expert to help get their messages out. Who would have thought? That wasn't in my frame of mind of thinking. I'm learning to do things in a new way, to expand. Today, our multimedia approach to sharing this good news and message is reaching people not only across Atlanta, across Georgia, across the United States, but people checking in from around the world as well. Welcome. What a change. We have to think in a new way. We're being called to see our ministries being shared in a dynamic new way. This is our time for a triumphal entrance into a new way of doing ministry. And each and every one of us is being called to live our life in a new way. Just think about how our lives have been changed over the past four weeks, our careers, our day-to-day -day routines, our family dynamics, our social agenda changed. Everything has changed. And it's calling us to think and live in a new way. Someone posted, hey, anyone needing a ride back to 2019 because I'm leaving in the morning? And we all laughed at this, thinking it was quite funny. But what we're really seeing is that uh, we don't want to return to a previous normal. Move forward. We want what is our new normal. We don't want to go back to what brought us to this situation in the first place. Because whatever was happening in a world that was bringing this to us, oh, we don't want it repeated. Instead, we want to live and operate in a new way. We want to receive this challenge as a time to move into new territory and to live our life in a new way. So we need to begin to ask ourselves, how will I be different after being sequestered for a long period of time? In what ways do I want to change and not go back to the normal? And what really will be this new normal for me? Because so many of us have become complacent in our spiritual life, yet God is ever doing something new. And here is an opportunity for us to awaken to this. God is expanding and inviting us to multiply, go forth and multiply, as that passage in Genesis was given to Adam and Eve, a command not just to reproduce and have children, but to multiply in all things, to expand in consciousness, to expand in knowledge and understanding. The universe, all that is God, is calling us today to make a triumphal entrance into a new phase. There's a passage from Isaiah 43, 19. It says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Wow, right now, God is doing a new thing. Can you see a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland? You see, this is our moment to open up our eyes, to see things differently, and to begin to make changes within our life. As we're experiencing this time of solitude, a time to reflect and look inward, a time to look and say, what changes do I want to make? And what will be my new normal? You see, the way that the universe corrects itself is not by going back, but going forward to a new normal. Our spiritual work is to open our eyes to the understanding of what this new thing is that the universe is offering me. 
something new unfolding for me. For our world is facing a lot of lack of care for the planet and uh, there's situations of pollution and destruction of our ecosystem. There's greed and lack of care for others and a lot of selfishness, a lot of concern for me, 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 and thoughts of supremacy, ego rise. And what's happening right now is it's correcting itself. Suddenly we're seeing people awaken to compassion as never before. I'm ever amazed at my neighbors who are calling out to me and saying, do you need help? How can I help you? Can I go to the grocery store for you? What can I do to assist you? I love the outreach and the wonderful ways that people are touching one another from a distance in that social distancing, but touching from the heart and sharing in new ways. I love how people are beginning to work together and seeing the needs that we need to collaborate more than ever before. We used to think we could go our own way, but even the world is saying, wait a minute, we all need to come together. It's not me first, it's we first, and coming together in new ways. No longer are we being greedy, but we're realizing we've got to help each other out. We're sharing face masks, we're sharing um, equipment for hospitals, we're sharing all kinds of things as never before, reaching out to say who has a need and how can we be there? You see, this is a place of expansion right now, a moment where we're being asked to really examine what's really essential. A place of expansion moving forward, well, it only takes place when we lighten our load, when we begin to ask, what in my life is really, really essential? Years ago, I took a group to Kenya, a group of young people. We left from the United States on a wonderful mission trip. We were there to work with several different tribes along the western coast of Kenya, familiar territory for me. Traveling student group, I invited them all to pack light. We're gonna be traveling, so remember, pack really, really light for the journey. Ah, uh, there was one young lady who decided she needed to include every single safari look she could come up with. She was going to dress for the nines through this excursion, and she had packed three large designer bags full of clothing for a variety of changes. When we arrived in Nairobi, everyone was called upon to pick up their bags. Wait, wait, she says, who's gonna help me with my bags? I've got far too many bags for me to carry by myself, crying out to one another saying, would you help me, would you help me, would you help me? Team members began to respond and say, you know what, if you're gonna go where we're going, you've gotta lighten your load. You've gotta to learn to carry or get, uh, get rid of some of these things. Begin to choose what's essential, because if you want to go where we're going, you've got to lighten that load. She had to determine then what was really essential and leave the rest behind. Let me tell you this, expansion happens when we what's really essential in our lives. Historically, all these pandemics have forced humans to break with the past and to imagine the world in a whole new way. And this one is no different. It's a portal. It's a gateway. This is a moment to begin to look at this world in a new way. We can choose to walk through this moment, dragging our baggage, struggling and saying, how do we do? Or we can lighten our load and begin to see what's truly essential to set ourselves free. Because the more we clear of our mess, the more we clear of our stress. That's right. The more we release, the more we let go say what's really essential and what's most important. This is a time of discovery within. And when we do, and we narrow our focus to what's most important, what happens is we raise our vibration. We liberate it to a new and higher level. We raise your vibration and when we do, we attract new and powerful things to our lives. We raise it in a way that we give an undivided attention to what is essential in this moment and for our new normal. Philippians chapter four, six through nine shares this. Be anxious for nothing. In other words, raise your vibration. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds. Finally, brethren, it says, 
whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report. If there is any excellence, if anything is worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. It says practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. You see, as we raise the vibration, this is what's most important. This is what I see as essential. I begin to attract now the perfect peace of God in my life. And what do we find? A joyful expansion. For the purpose of our life is truly this, a joyful expansion, a triumphal entrance, a joyful entrance into something new within our hearts and our lives. You see, Jesus did not enter into Jerusalem in fear, though there were challenges he was going to face. Those around him responded to his confidence. They saw that he had a perfect peace in his message, within him, in his words, radiating, vibrating from him. And they shouted praises to this messenger. Hosanna, waving the palm branches, welcoming this messenger, welcoming his message into Jerusalem. Now, our work right now is to get the joy factor into our equation. What's going on right now? We've got to wake up the joy factor within us. The joy of life is found when we slow down and we find out what's more important and what is of real value to us. And that is then that we can move to another level. The joy is your inner being, finding an awareness of what really is needed, what really matters. Maybe community matters now more than ever before. Visiting with a lot of people, they're all saying, wow, I didn't realize what's really important in my life. I miss a hug. When I get through this, I'm gonna hug a whole lot more. And when I get through this, I'm gonna be much more social. And when I get through this, I'm gonna to come to church a whole lot more. Wow. People are discovering what's essential as they see what's most important, as they begin to search for that inner joy. For your emotions tell you everything about your relationship with that inner being, with God, with God within you. And when your emotions are focusing on these difficulties, well, your emotions are not centered on God. So center your emotions on God. Find the joy in this moment of expansion. Find the joy of moving into your own individual Jerusalem, for this story is your story. It's speaking to you. Every Bible story is unfolding our individual story. It's calling us today to have a triumphal entrance into this moment, a triumphal entrance into a moment of expansion and moving beyond where we've been before. From Deuteronomy chapter 12, 20 is a beautiful passage. The Lord your God expands your territory as he promised. How oh, beautiful. It goes on to describe this, that that which you desire, you may speak it, you may claim it, and it's yours. When you're understanding that God is in the work of expansion and your soul, your consciousness, your awareness moving to new levels. This passage that we read from uh, scripture today and Jabez called on God of Israel saying, oh, that thou would bless me, enlarge my territory, enlarge my coast, enlarge my boundaries, just expand me. And that may be our prayer today in the midst of this challenge that we're going through. God, expand my spiritual journey, expand my understanding, expand my knowledge, expand me in this experience to be in greater love, compassion, service, Expand me in ways that I understand what's really essential and what's most important in our lives. So it is then that we find a consciousness that comes to us, that enables us to move beyond limits, move beyond borders and to transcend all limitations with the intention to simply uncover more within us in our lives. Everything we endure is our vehicle to a this goal. Everything we're going through right now is a vehicle to accomplish the goal of expansion of the soul. Everything is our opportunity to grow and let's utilize this opportunity to the fullest. Jesus faced his challenges with triumph and invites you to do the same. He's our great way shower, our example. 
He's showing us when we move into new territory with a spirit of confidence and triumph, expansion is ours. His greatest moment was about to unfold as he began to reveal all his teaching and truth coming alive through the resurrection message that was yet to unfold. What's going on? What do we call this time? What do we call what we're going through in this scenario in life? I call it a moment of triumph. I call it our triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. This is our moment of expansion. This is our time to make a triumphant entrance. And so it is.